Good morning. Good morning. I welcome you on this 11th Sunday after Pentecost, August 13th. Uh, you know, many of us experienced the, the big storm last night that came through, right? And as, as I was coming in this morning, I was reflecting on the text, the, the story that we're about to, uh, we will be reading tonight, uh, today. Uh, it's about Jesus riding through the storm with the disciples as he was walking toward uh, the boat. I think that's a perfect setting for us to reflect on as we experienced the storm last night, uh, providing some context of what happened in our story that we will read later on. Jesus experienced the disciples and Jesus experienced this violent storm in the middle of the sea. Nevertheless, we are here, we gather here in a sunny day and a little bit humid, but, but we are glad that you are here with us. So friends, let us join our hearts and our mind for the worship of God. Will you please join me for the call to worship? Oh, give thanks to the Lord, call on his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him. Tell of all his wonderful works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Seek the Lord and his strength. Seek his presence continually. Remember the wonderful works he has done, his miracles, and the judgment he has uttered. O offspring of his servant Abraham, children of Jacob, his chosen ones, praise the Lord. Let us pray. Holy God, you speak to us in a voice unexpected and come to us in ways we do not recognize, never leaving us to our own devices or defenses. You are the ever-present, all-powerful God. Call us out in faith again and again until we learn to walk with you in steadfast love and faithfulness and in peace. In the name of him who comes to us upon the waters, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Our opening hymn is number 624, I greet thee who my sure redeemer art. Thou hast 
Just a true and perfect gentleness. No harshness hast thou, and no bitterness. All grants to us the grace we find in thee, that we may dwell in perfect unity. All hope is in no other save in thee. Our faith is built up on thy promise free. Lord, give us peace and make us calm and sure that in thy strength we evermore and Amen. Please be seated. Friends, God makes no distinctions among us. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous. Indeed, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved as we turn to God in true confession of our sin. We trust in God, who shalom make us whole. Let us pray the prayer of confession in unison. Gracious God, you call us to step out in faith, trusting in you for all things. We respond to your command, but then sink in doubt and fear. We hide from the challenges of bold discipleship. We are not able to fulfill your commands, for our purposes are never in full accord with yours. Forgive us, we pray, when we confess with our lips, but do not believe in our hearts. Help us to practice our faith in all circumstances. Lift us out of sin into the arms of your mercy. Though we are distracted by noise all around, allow us to hear your voice even when it is the sound of sheer silence. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus is Lord. God raised him from the dead and we are saved through him. This is the good news. We believe in our hearts and confess with our mouths. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. When through the Pentecostal spirit, Christ is living among us. Christ continues to inspire us into actions and stir our love and compassion towards others in our lives. Sisters and brothers, let us share God's loving presence and peace that surpasses all of our human understanding. Let us share and turn to our neighbor, share our peace and our joy with our neighbors. Let us turn to one another. May the peace of Christ be with you. I will invite uh, Margaret to come up um, to read our first scripture reading today. Uh, coming from Romans chapter 10, verses 5 to 15.
Moses writes concerning the righteousness that comes from the law, that the person who does these things will live by them. But the righteousness that comes from faith says, do not say in your heart who will ascend into heaven, that is, bring Christ down, or who will descend into the abyss, that is, to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The word is near you, on your lips and in your heart. That is the word of faith that we proclaim. Because if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For one believes with the heart and so is justified, and one confesses with the mouth and so is saved. The scripture says, no one who believes in him will be put to shame, for there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. The same Lord is Lord of all and is generous to all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But how are they to call on one in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in one of whom they have never heard of? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim it to them? And how are they to proclaim him unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 14, verses 22 to 33. This is the, uh, the continuation of the, the story that we've been uh, reading through Matthew. Uh, so last, last week we were reading about the Jesus' miracle of five loaves and two fishes, and this is comes what's what comes after. Listen to the word of God. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. And after he had dismissed the crowds, he went up to the mountain by himself to pray. When the evening came, he was there alone. But by this time, the boat, battered by the waves, was far from the land, for the wind was against them. And early in the morning, he came walking towards them in the sea, on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified, saying, It is a ghost! And they cried out in fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them and said, Take heart, it is I. Do not be afraid. Then Peter answered him, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. And Jesus said, Come. So Peter got out of the boat, started walking on the water, and came towards Jesus. And when he noticed the strong wind, he became frightened and beginning, and beginning to sink. He cried out, Lord, save me! And Jesus immediately reached out his hands and caught him, saying to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? When they got into the boat, the wind ceased. And those in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. Friends, this is the word of the Lord for us this morning. Thanks be to God.
Last week we read about the miracle feeding of the 5,000 plus with just five loaves and two fishes. We saw how one simple, generous, selfless act of giving by a young boy could inspire change and set an example for others to share. Consequently, Jesus also challenged his disciples and his followers to go and do likewise, to feed his sheep through acts of giving and sharing. Our gospel lesson this morning from Matthew picks up right where we had left off. By now the crowd had been dismissed and sent back to their homes. They were well fed, not only spiritually, but now physically as well. And it was getting late. Jesus and his disciples were going to travel by night, uh, by boat overnight, and move on to the next town. But Jesus instructed his disciples to go ahead, go ahead of him, while he himself stayed behind in order to spend some quality time to pray with his father up in the mountain. This was part of Jesus' spiritual discipline in order to replenish himself. However, while the disciples were traveling overnight, their boat encountered a violent storm in the middle of the sea, much like the storm that we experienced last night. I had to get up in the middle of the night with all the, the, the thunder and the lightning and because I had to close the windows. <laughs> the window was coming, the water was coming in. The waves from the storm were crashing up against the disciples' boat to a point that it might eventually sink. Not even these professional fishermen were able to control the boat. Many, I'm sure, fear for their lives while crying out for help. And suddenly, from a far distance, they saw this ghostly figure walking towards the boat along the sea. Many of the disciples were frightened by this ghostly figure. They heard, then they heard a familiar voice calling back to them, saying, Take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. As this figure, this individual, ghostly figure, walked closer and closer towards the boat, Peter, who was always the impulsive one, the, the self-proclaimed leader among the disciples, recognized that it was the voice of Jesus. Peter cried out to Jesus and asked if he could join him to come out of the boat. At first, Peter was successful, but then the moment he realized where he was and saw the rough waves crashing onto him under his feet, Peter, Peter became frightened and began to sink. Out of his desperation, Peter cried out to Jesus one more time. He says, Lord, Lord, save me! Immediately, Peter reached out his hand and rescued the sinking Peter, and he said to him, You of little faith, why did you doubt? Undoubtedly, this near-death experience might be a turning point or a highlight of Peter's faith journey. Perhaps some of us might have similar experience as well, when certain incidents mark a turning point of our faith. It may or may not be a near-death experience. I know I had one when one time I was, uh, I was in the pool and then I saw this flash of lightning coming down and all of a sudden I felt the joke. I felt the lightning shot through the water. That was my near-death experience. Um, there was another one that I came close to. Uh, uh, a lightning hit the light pole maybe about 30 feet away. I was that close. 
Peter, that was twice. If we were Peter, in, if we were in Peter's situation, how would we have reacted when the storms of our lives arise? Do we become discouraged like Peter, feeling intimidated or crying out for help, or do we stay within our safe space or the comfort zone, stay within our boat and hoping and praying that the storm will ride itself out and everything will be okay? Or do we make an effort to meet Jesus at least halfway by taking up, taking a leap of faith, step out of the boat, and let Jesus lead us and guide us through the storms and onto the dry land? Just like the feeding of the five thousand plus, our story, our story today also reveal a. Not so obvious, a subtle miracle. The miracle did not occur when Peter climbed out of the boat and began walking on water. A greater miracle occurred after Jesus was rescued by Jesus, and he began. He came to recognize who Jesus was. In the midst of his desperation, Peter cried out for help. For his Lord and Savior, for this incident transformed Peter's faith, turning his fear and doubt into his faith. When Peter and Jesus both got into the boat, the the wind subsided; it was calm. All the disciples who witnessed all these. Right before their eyes, proclaim, "Truly, you are the Son of God." I'm sure we have heard this story many, many times since our Sunday school days. It's one of my favorites too. It is filled with many dramas and suspense. Even little kids can relate to. But I think we can. Learn a few lessons from our story as well. First, when it comes to our personal doubts and faith, we must recognize God's presence and ongoing activities that are already happening in our lives. We come to acknowledge that our God is sovereignly in control, even beyond our human comprehension. We do not see what God sees, not according to our timing, but God's. But do we only call upon God when we are in immediate immediate danger? What about the times when things are going well? Let's not forget about God. Let's not forget to call upon God and thank God for. Continue to sustain and nurturing our relationship. Even Jesus needed to spend some quality time to spend alone with his Father up in the mountain. Well, so do we. Second, we must recommit our lives and our focus by restoring God first and foremost, instead of ourselves. Remember what Peter said when he first saw Jesus as was approaching the boat. Peter said, "If it is you, Lord, command me to come to you on the water. If it is you, Lord, command me to come to you on the water." If we read this, Peter's response in a slightly different context or perspective. One could perhaps raise the question: Was was Peter was just thinking about himself? Why just save him? And what about the rest of the brothers who are in the boat? Was Peter selfishly abandoning the ship and risking the lives of his brothers, going down with it? 
Peter didn't ask Jesus to calm the sea right away or to rescue him, but he asked him, asked Jesus to enable him to walk on water towards him. We may never know what Peter's motivation was. Some may question his motivation. What was he thinking at that time? Was Peter only thinking about his own safety and welfare? The reason why Peter sank, though, was because of his lack of faith and personal doubt. Perhaps of his motivation was not proper. His eyes and his heart were fixed upon himself instead of upon Jesus and his fellow disciples. It's not about you, Peter. What about us? How often do we find ourselves in similar situations like Peter's? Looking and demanding for evidence of God's miracle to happen right before our eyes. How often do we think of our own interests first before others? How often have we failed to put our best foot forward in seeing God's miracles that's already happening around us? Sometimes we have built this false sense of security around us, surrounded by storms of fear, insecurities, and doubts, instead of anchoring our faith upon Christ. In the same way from our second, our first passage earlier that Margaret read for us, from Peter's, from Paul's letter to the early church in Rome. The apostle was inviting the Romans to get off the boat and walk by remaining steadfast and anchor in their faith. Despite the turbulence and threat of dangers or even persecutions, for God remained firmly in control. Even when the situation may seem dire and desperate at times. Just like those disciples who are on a sinking boat in the, middle, in the middle of the stormy sea. Both of our passages today challenge us to be God's agents and agents of hope and witness of grace and compassion towards others. As verses 13 to 15 reminded us that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But before anyone can be saved, one must be called. And before anyone is called, one must believe. And before anyone believes, one must hear. And before anyone hears, one must proclaim. And last but not least, before anyone proclaims, one must be sent out. Furthermore, we must also come to realize that salvation is not up to us, or dependent upon our own personal achievements or accomplishments. Ultimately, it is up to God to render God's grace and benevolence upon the people. We are not called to be heroes and the savior of this world. We just do our best and allow God to do the rest. Just like the little boy who surrendered his share of five loaves and two fishes, he didn't think of himself as a hero. At least three of the four gospel writers didn't think he was worthy to be named. All he did all that little boy did was allow Jesus to be used. What he had offered in order to perform, in order for Jesus to perform the greater miracle of transformation. The transformation of the people's hearts. Furthermore, from our story today, today 
how often do we find ourselves running on empty in our spiritual tank? Perhaps we may find ourselves constantly giving and giving, turning and running all over the place in the name of missions and caring for others. We find ourselves acting like firefighters while responding to many fires and storms right after one after another. when these storms may seem to be no end in sight. Perhaps we need to learn from what Jesus did to care for our own spiritual lives and replenish our spiritual reservoir before we can care for others. We all get tired at times. We need to keep our spiritual vibrancy alive, not only for others, but also for ourselves. It's okay to spend some time alone, away from the people, to spend some time alone to be with God. That's what Jesus did. He sent the disciples out. He said, I need to go up and pray. You guys go ahead. I'll meet you there. We must do likewise by practicing personal self-care and to develop a discipline of prayer and spiritual discernment, especially in the midst of many storms all around us. Prayers keep our spiritual journey grounded and in stride with the Holy Spirit as we listen attentively to what the Spirit has to say. Not according to our motivation, our purpose, but according to God's. Through prayers, we share our intimate thoughts and communicate with God, as God delights in us when we come before Him in humbleness and humility. Friends, in times when we find ourselves in turbulent water and violent waves, where there is, seems to be no turning back to the shore. We must keep sailing where the Spirit may lead us and where the wind blows. Trust that God is walking alongside with us and will reach out His hands and rescue us should we ever lose our faith and begin to sink. God is sovereignly in control, even when things may look bleak and hopeless. God has commissioned us to be agents of his love by seeking peace through the ministry of grace, acceptance, and reconciliation with others. We need to look out for others who might be sinking in their faith and help our brothers and sisters just as, just as God, just as Jesus came and rescued us. We are simply chosen as God's messengers and agents, as the hands and the feet of God's witnesses. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. Like the disciples, God has sent us to be on the front line of this battle, combating the storms and obstacles of what lies ahead. We acknowledge that there is only one God and one God and one Lord who is the Prince of Peace who seeks to rescue those who are crying out for God's mercy, justice, and peace. Let us put forth our best foot forward by casting out our fears and doubts and turning our faith, turning our fear into faith. Thanks be to God, in the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us now respond by singing hymn number 318, 
In Christ there is no east or west. Those uh, who may not know that Jack was, when did he return home? On Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah, he, he's home now, um, recovering, and uh, continue to pray for Jack and uh, May uh, and Kara for provi- you know, providing care and uh, as Jack re- recovering from his uh, recent bout of health concerns. So uh, pray for Jack and Carol's brother Colton and Curtis. Others? Uh, yes, Elizabeth? Benjamin is who is who who is he? Pray for his safe. Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, Ken. morning I think I, I saw it's like close to a hundred people have been confirmed uh, dead because of the fire uh, yeah pray for the 
you know, the, 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 the resources might be you know, a little scarce when you're on the island. And, uh, so that presents a challenge as well. So uh, pray for the mobilizations of uh, those who can uh, go and I guess it's now kind of in a recovery mode. Uh, but pray for the families of those who lost loved ones uh, due to the fire. Yeah. Kind of similarly, that uh, this week uh, I, I learned through, through two of my Facebook friends that have families who uh, got into some serious car uh, accidents, like serious car accidents. The cars were total, and then, but the, thankfully, the, the, many of the members were safe. Uh, they're hospitalized, but they're they're doing okay. Uh, so. so Thank God for protections and uh, for, for those who are drivers, you know that how uh, it's not the same as it used to be uh, safety-wise these days when you're driving on a, on a road. So please be extra, extra careful when you're driving. Uh, so prayer of thanksgiving for the families, the two families, uh, whose families, you know, just, you're talking about the entire family, you know, not just one person. It's the mother and three kids and then there was a the daughter and uh, uh, the other family. So two families have uh, near, uh, nearly escaped death uh, from the car crash this week. So. Others? Yes, uh, Margaret? Thank you. Okay. Friends, let us join our hearts in prayers. Oh, be before we go, uh, just a note uh, that yeah, last week we heard from uh, Philip. Uh, so I, I know he's looking for a job, right? He's, he's yeah. looking for a permanent job. And so uh, pray for his search and others who have recently graduated. Uh, pray for uh, Philip's discernment of his future path, and, uh, whether he wants to continue school or looking for a job. And, uh, you know, I think young people need our encouragement and support in any ways uh, we can. So pray for those who are recent graduates and uh, those who are looking for jobs and just planning for their future. Let us pray. Gracious, loving God, we offer you thanks and joy and praise this morning. and We give you thanks for your continual vigilance and guidance through many storms in, in our lives. For those who have witnessed various health situations, and, uh, we pray that you would continue to keep watch over them. Can you also pray for uh, our brother Jack and, and his two sons, Carlton and Curtis, uh, who, are, who recently had their uh, medical procedures and uh, they're recovering at home. We pray that you would uh, continue to keep watch and guide them, keep them rest and peace in your comfort and the care. Uh, we pray for others who are also had recent surgeries and operations, uh, including uh, Yi Ming's uh, daughter, uh, who is continuing to receive her treatment as well. Uh, we pray for Elizabeth's friend, uh, Benjamin, uh, that you would continue to keep him safe and uh, keep watch over him and be his uh, angels by his side. We pray, Lord, for the uh, wildfire that happened in Hawaii, uh, for those who are mobilized to help uh, the rescuers and uh, recovering from the storm, that the fire that happened. 
we, Lord, we lift up the uh, families of those who lost their loved ones through this tragic fire. We pray that you would give them peace and comfort in the midst of their sudden, sudden loss of their loved ones. We also pray a prayer of thanksgiving for the two families, who, uh, two of my friends' families who recently had, uh, this week, had severe car accidents, and we thank you for keeping watch and protecting them, uh, that, uh, that although their car may be total, and, but we ask that we thank you for your protection and keeping them safe uh, in the midst of all this. We also pray for the cities uh, all around in the country and other parts of the world experiencing violence and the many insanities or, uh, that, might, that are happening. We pray for the peace throughout the city and the enforcements, the, the law enforcement that they would take actions. And we pray for those who are carrying out these random senseless acts in this, that they would that you would motivate them and their hearts to care for others, and not just for their own purpose and for their own uh, pleasure. And they care in the name of taking advantage of others. Lord, we also continue to pray for others, graduates who are recent graduates who are looking for jobs. And we know that the future that you have prepared for them including uh, Relifta Phillips and many of his friends as well who are looking for jobs and uh, perhaps discerning what, what the future that they may have. Whether they continue to school, to have school or continue to search for jobs. And we pray for your, we pray for your discernment, uh, for their diligence and faithfulness. We thank you for his ongoing uh, dedication to the work that, that he did throughout overseas this past couple of weeks and this past couple of months. We ask that you continue to use Philip in, in all that he does. And Lord, we lift up many concerns that we may cherish in our hearts, but we know that we care, you care for us. Help us to be your hands and your feet in this world. For you reminded us that how beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news to others. All this we pray in the name of our Lord Jesus, the Christ who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. But thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. For the offering, I invite you to please, uh, on your way out, please drop off your offering in the back table. And we thank all those who uh, continue to uh, contribute to the ministry, to cost, to support the ministry of this church. Just a reminder, our Wednesday Bible study will resume after September, or starting in September. So for those who are regulars, you know, start thinking about which book you want to, to study. Okay, so let me know, and then we can, it's only two weeks away, right? September is only two weeks away, so um, start thinking about it. Yeah. I, have, I have a couple in mind, but uh, you, I want to hear what you guys want to do for September. Friends, let us conclude our worship this morning by singing hymn number 265. Jesus shall reign wherever the sun.
such a rain wherever the sun does its ascensive journeys run. His kingdom stretch from shore to shore. Till moon shall wet and wing no Shall that last prayer be made, and praise his throne to crown his head. His name like sweet perfume shall rise with every morning sacrifice. People that rams of every tongue dwelled on his love with sweetest song, and infants' voices shall proclaim their early blessings on his name. Blessings abound wherever he reigns. The prisoners sleep to loose their chains. The weary body eternal rest. And all who suffer want are blessed. Every creature rise and bring on a peculiar to our King. Angels descend with songs again, and earth repeat the loud Amen. Friends, Christ invites us to step out in faith, trusting that the God who has called you is able to keep you from falling and holding you in His love. May the steadfast love and faithfulness of God surround you. May the peace of Christ enfold you. And may the Holy Spirit encourage you now and forever. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all until we meet again. And all of God's people say, Amen. Go, my children, fed and nourished, Closer to me, grow in love and love by serving, joyful and free. Hear my spirit, power fill you. Hear my tender comfort, still you. Go, my children. Fed and nourished, joyful and free. Please be seated. Friends, may you have a blessed week and be a blessing to others.